are we back, boys? Speaking about scam projects, once again, exposing things, talking about some drama and things like that. Are we back? That's the main question. Can you smell it? Can you smell it in the air, right? You might ask, what the F is Merlin Chain? You might want to close this video right away. And I can tell you right away, you are not going to make it. This video is packed with insights, with things that largest people in the industry were discussing on Satoshi Roundtable event, with things that CEOs of market-making agencies are talking about, hedge funds and OGs in ordinal space that made multiple millions of dollars already. They are focusing on this project. I can tell you right away, What's the next narrative is going to be? It's Bitcoin layer 2. This is where liquidity flows in currently. This is what will happen next. You need to stay focused. You need to understand things. You need to take advantage of this opportunity. Not close the video. Make sure to watch it till the end. It's packed with alpha. And you actually have a chance to participate yourself in the IDO process. Despite the fact that most of these projects are just fundraising funds from the VCs and then they launch on the marketplace. So retail investors, they have no access to the projects like that. In this video, we will go through Merlin Chain, which is Bitcoin layer 2 solution with ZK rollup implementation as well. And we have a bunch of OG ordinal guys and developers actually being focused on the launch of this chain. And probably you as a retail market participant did not hear anything about it yet. Maybe there is a reason for that. And maybe there is a reason for them wanting you to hear a lot about things like Satoshi VM and do not hear anything about Merlin chain. In this video, we will go through the opportunity, through the chain, and we will actually answer the question, is Merlin chain a scam? Let's go. So let's start. What the F is Merlin Chain? Merlin Chain is a Bitcoin layer 2 solution, which is basically a scaling solution for the Bitcoin. So the whole goal of having something like this on the marketplace is to actually speed up transactions for BTC, make sure that you can swap other assets for the BTC as well. Therefore, you're actually opening up a huge ecosystem where you can actually build stuff. There are things like stacks on the market already, but the user experience is kind of bad because it's quite similar to BTC. Therefore, it's not being used to vastly at this stage, right? Why I'm talking to you about Bitcoin layer twos like Merlin chain, B2, stacks, things like that, because there are a bunch of them already as well, but not of them actually have the token at this stage. Very, very small amount of them have the token at this stage. The reason I'm talking to you about Bitcoin layer twos is because obviously with Satoshi VM case, we also saw that that's going to be the main narrative. This is what was discussed on Satoshi Roundtable with top people in crypto in Dubai. This is what CEOs of hedge funds are actually talking about themselves. This is where liquidity pours into at this stage. They're throwing crazy amounts of money into Bitcoin layer twos and teams that are developing anything connected with Bitcoin layer twos. With Merlin Chain, we actually have a very, very great and nice advantage. The main reason for which is that the team who are developing Merlin Chain, they're quite known in ordinal space. They already developed several products in ordinal spaces. Some of them, they appreciate it like crazy, just great they done like 100 X's already. Therefore, it's always great to follow the developers and it's always great to follow developers that proved that the assets, that the things that they're working on, they appreciate the value. That's the only thing that you basically need to do. And this is how whales trade on the marketplace as well. They just follow the early narrative. They know great engineers. They follow great engineers that proved already that the assets that they're developing are being appreciated over time. You also might ask a question. Bitcoin layer two popped up just from nowhere. Stacks was developed for four years already, has some implementation of ZK VM technology and for Satoshi VM and basically was the main case of why people understood that this is camp project with bad intentions in the first place. So it's very, very interesting what is happening in this case. It almost feels like I have sold my soul and I am pushing this project to you right now. Yes, I'm not pushing anything. I was paid zero. In fact, the only thing that I would be sharing on this video is how you can participate in the launchpad, in the IDO to get the allocation. We will also do an autopsy of Merlin chain. What the F is this? Is this legit? Can you invest into this thing? Do I think it's going to pump? And what type of people that I know 
are actually following and actively actively participating in Merlin chain. Let's start with an article, right? Merlin chain is also one of the EVM compatible layer two chains being developed by Bitmap Tech, formerly Recurse Levers. I can never say this. The team that built BRC for 20 protocols and Bitmap game. Very, very important information. And this highly valued by the community due to the team's past success. That's something I mentioned to you already. One of the reasons of why this is a legit project, might be a legit project, is because the team that is behind these things, they are OG ordinal builders in this space. They've been followed by a bunch of people and bunch of people whales that made bunch of money on this stuff that they've developed they're just throwing money at anything that these guys provide therefore they're very very good pumpamentals for this thing right BRC420 is basically the standards for assets inside bitmap metaverse i know i just basically told you a bunch of technical and uh, complex words but these are just assets like models inside the metaverse of bitmap and there was this main blue box asset just, that just went like crazy like right now one blue box costs like uh, thirty thousand dollars and it basically was starting from zero so imagine the amount of access that the early adopters that were following these developers were basically able to make already bitmap game is also essentially a game in terms of the bitmap metaverse and things like that so they're just sharing and proving here that they are og developers in this space well well known leveraging the care lab for efficient and secure scaling the diverse ecosystem blah 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 so that's something to check out because i can't say that I am that technical to be able to tell right away if the fact that they're using ZK rollup is something that just basically calls them a scam and that it's impossible and things like that. However, we will go through one of the reviews in this video as well and I will provide you information in terms of the token and in terms of the chain as well. So we have general overview here. One of the things that I wanted to share as well is a very, very interesting point too. So guys, if you've been in the ordinal space, you know that there is Block Runner podcast, OG developers, guys, they've been in the metaverse like for four years. They recently developed and launched Tab DMT NAT token, which basically just went up like crazy, crazy trading volumes. Very, very great thing. And a lot of people, they were following them using the same type of mind frame. They are OG developers in the space. I would just be buying anything that they are releasing from their end. That's a very, very simple and very, very interesting thing. So what are they saying? Merlin Chain by Bitmap Tech is the biggest Layer 2 activation we've been seen so far since Layer 2 started heating up. Considering the pre-mainnet hype, it will likely attract a ton of liquidity, but it is the ideal Layer 2 technology stack for the Bitcoin developer system. We explore. So here is the video that you can check out. They're basically just talking about the Merlin Chain, about pros and cons and things like that. Summary. Summary. We delve into the dynamic world of Layer 2 solutions and the groundbreaking technology shaping. They, it's probably generated with chat GPT. Shaping the future of blockchain scalability. Maryland Layer 2 chain is set to attract a ton of market interest, blah, 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 despite the risks. Gamify, DeFi, and Metaverse apps. Very, very interesting because these guys, they're coming from BRC420 standard, which is the standard for the assets in the Metaverse and the bitmap in terms of ordinals. Therefore, there is a high chance there would be enablement in terms of the things that are connected with Metaverse. I know you might think that the Metaverse is a dead narrative and things like that, but it's quite a life in ordinals with bitmap and i'm saying blue box right now costs thirty thousand dollars it basically started from zero i think from 400 bucks somewhere around the start of the last year why i'm showing you this this is obviously like a chat gpt sum up and things like that because these are og developers in this space they interview people themselves they do their due diligence they're very very technical by themselves the reason that they're talking about this is actually quite quite bullish there is also other og ordinals podcast which is called ordinal revolution and they basically have interview with jeff from bitmap tech who is the developer kind of the head of the development team behind merlin chain so in the first place we do understand that the developers is well known he is taking part in the interviews he is not anonymous to an extent he is not silent as well he is actually talking about the project before it was launched not after the ido and after the whole thing went to zero right but we are here to check the exact situation it's all great in terms of you know og people following these things developers and things like that we are here to basically check what exactly is happening on the technical part how is it to use the whole thing and provide our full and honest overview so i found this guy on twitter whose name is bebenobi go follow him actually he basically done a full overview of merlin chain he played with some source code he played with the front end as well and it's very very interesting i did some tests 
Destiny of Merlin Layer 2 and it has a preliminary score of 17 out of 50 in my rating system. Therefore, he basically rated Merlin Chain at 34% out of 100 at this stage, which is quite low. I will show you his ratings and his exact spreadsheet later in this video. Ratings are based on five categories. In this case, four because I wasn't able to transact on the network yet. I'm guessing it will have some sort of gas token, but to be developed. Peg in of BTC takes four blocks, about 40 minutes. So peg in of BTC is basically when you transfer in your BTC to the network of this layer two. A default type of example, for example, you're transferring Ethereum from Ethereum to Arbitrum, right? And bridge, it does not take like much time. Here in this case, he is saying that it took four blocks, which is basically 40 minutes at this stage. Peg out is not available yet. It says 14 days, but I don't know what will happen there. It's quite interesting. So right now, basically, in order to be able to participate in the IDO, you bridge your BTC to the network of this chain and you don't have the option to extract it back. They're basically just saying that extract option will appear in two weeks. And I have around like $2,000 locked at this stage, but I would want to get it up to at least 5 to 8K because... I do know and I do understand what type of people are basically following these things and what type of people are developing these things as well. But I'm not pushing you to anything. I just think it's a very, very, very great and interesting opportunity to discover. And obviously, you can invest less. Uh, that's everything. It's up to you. Did some technical digging around. Main looks like it is a fork of Ziki EVM based on what I could deduce from the RPC API. So a fork of Ziki EVM basically means that they took the code, like the source code from Ziki EVM, and they use it and they change some methods, change some functions in order to work for their own chain and for their own case. It's not that bad because a lot of the products, they actually were developed in crypto as forks. So you basically just fork BTC and you have your own chain, like Dogecoin, for example, was developed like that, right? And RPC, RPC API is basically basically just a standard set of methods, set of rules, like how you would communicate with the node of the project. So how you would basically, if you are, if you're a program, if you're a developer, how you would ask for data from the network and how you would basically be sending your data in, in order to provide some outputs and some values as well. I'm trying to explain this as simple as I can. I was not able to see any nodes or any instructions. So nodes you basically need in the network in order for the network to run to be secure and things like that. Very important information for anyone to learn how to start a node, which means that there is probably just a single node being run behind an Amazon Web Services ELB. A very, very interesting because a single node just means that there are not a bunch of nodes. Therefore, they will not be distributing the information how to set up your own node into the public and between the team members, which basically means for us that it's in a very early, early, early stage because if it would be a test net, then we would have basically a large amount of nodes because there are basically companies Companies. There are private companies in the US who are specifically providing services of installing nodes to the parties, to large investors, to private companies and things like that. And this is the only thing that they're doing. There are so many ways to make money in crypto, just crazy. Looks more like a single node devnet than a testnet or a mainnet. Got some weird results from the RPC API. Very interesting information. I already basically sure to sum up on that. Planning on doing some more digging here with friends later to see if we can learn more about what's run behind the ELB. Chapters in case you want to skip around. So I've checked all the videos several times. Go check out as well, guys, but basically just doing the full technical review it's very very valuable got the merlin pack btc but particle wallet isn't loading only due to an ssl error so basically <laughs> to translate it to you he transferred his btc into the merlin chain network and he was able to receive it because previously he was saying that he did not receive it yet but he's also using the wallet that is connected to the company to the website that is basically developing merlin chain and the wallet does not show the balance of the BTC that he basically received. But he sees it on chain that he basically received um, the wallet as well. And he's saying that the wallet might not work due to SSL error. That's basically a standard security protocol that you use on all of the websites. And the first comment under this is, ba is basically maybe you have the antivirus that blocks the whole thing. So it's, it's this like default Windows type of stuff implementations in terms of things like that. But it's, it's kind of bearish from that point of view because we do see, we do understand that we are very, very early. But if we're early, there's also an opportunity because once it will be working like smoothly and things like that, it will be appreciated in value. There would be a bunch of people there, VCs, and you will just get 
dumped on. Went to Merlin Swap and I have zero balance here as well. Probably due to this SSL errors on particle network. Devs do something. Where is my Bitcoin? So he he he, he basically said then that, that he received his BTC. I was not checking out that deeply, but I do have this balance number in terms of the BTC that I actually sent into the chain. Interesting thing that he checked out. Um, I'm sorry for the quality of screenshot. It basically was done from his video. He basically checked interoperability, public in terms of to like Twitter and things like that, transactions. Actions, um, usability, decentralized, and overall score, right? Interoperability, he got, uh, he basically got four because, like, the, there are not a lot of things that, that you can transfer to and send assets from one chain to another. Public, he basically got seven. Public is quite interesting because they have 150,000 followers on Twitter and they're already showing crazy amount of numbers in terms of the IDO, right? So there were participants, 100,000 participants in IDO in 23 hours. And from the point of view of people who are taking part, in this thing, I would assume that it's not going to be a rigged idea. That really people will receive the allocations based on the amount of funds that they're basically locking at this stage. And I will tell you about IDO process a bit later in the video and how you can participate in it as well. Great amount of views in terms of the posts, like two, 300k, right? And um, you probably don't see a bunch of like KOLs or influencers talking about this thing because I don't think they're actually buying out influencers in the first place because influencers don't get the allocation to this thing, right? And on top of that, it's huge in Chinese community. So I would say it's something more that comes from China. And it's quite bullish from my point of view as well, because of a lot of ordinals, a lot of things that a lot of assets, BRC for 20, things like that, they basically were pumped by Chinese guys, Chinese people. And I do think they participate in this thing heavily. They just sit there and farm the launch pad, do the things, do the tasks in order to increase the allocation that they will get and the success chance for the allocation as well. I actually had to translate the guide on how to participate in IDO from Chinese on Twitter, which is an interesting kind of threshold that you have to get in in order to get into this project. So they're not, they're definitely not chilling this crap into your face, right? One of the interesting things is that IDO is being launched at a very low market cap. I think it's like a hundred thousand dollars or maybe one million. And um, I don't understand the reason behind that because in the first place, they're giving very, very small amount of tokens to large amounts of people. So I do believe it's going to be a fair distribution in terms of the IDO. On top of that, the reason they have this like from 100K to 1 million market cap is because it's quite, it's basically free market. It's something that you would want to do for any type of project. The thing, the same thing basically happened with Satoshi VM, although it was proved that it was false in terms of the 300X and things like that. But if you're launching the IDO at 100K market cap, right? And right after the project launches, market cap just goes like to 20 million, 50 million, 100 million, you can say that you've just done 200x. And like retail, they, they will not be checking out because they don't understand like these things. They don't understand that if you're launching the project with a 100k valuation at the IDO price, the project just have to become 1 million market cap in order to do a 10x. And you can then advertise everywhere that uh, crazy launch of ITO, we just done a 10x and things like that. So it's basically free marketing that these guys are using in terms of this things, right? Transactions. So he was not able to transact because basically it's not live yet. It just have one node, most likely, which is run as a dev net, dev test net. So there is nothing there to transact on yet. Usable. So we have four in terms of him being able to bridge the assets to layer two and actually check out some score source code because the guy was basically able to find GitHub. He was able to find different RPCs. He was able to, to do different requests. He was able to figure out that they were testing out Polygon ZK AVM. He was able to figure out that they were also testing out Cosmos SDK, right? But, but, they, but, but they probably eventually decided to fork Polygon uh, ZK AVM. And they did talk something about Polygon based uh, layer two on the website as well. And from my point of view, basically, we had several projects where we were developing custom blockchains from scratch and Polygon ZKVM and their CDK is basically a great tool to do that. That's like the easiest thing. You basically just use the tool set, you fork the whole thing and you can develop your own blockchains because they provide a very, very interesting and useful set of rules right away. So I definitely approve this message from the point of view that it's definitely technology to use for layer twos because Polygon specifically has this tool set in order 
order to be able to do things like that. Decentralized he put two, just because of the fact that with all these bridges, I think it's actually public information that they were sharing that this bridge is centralized at this stage, so they're holding the assets. And that's kind of the way how each and every bridge actually works. So if you have a bridge, someone is holding your assets. Probably it's like a multi-stick wallet, probably you have some smart contract there, but you quite often hear this news that some type of bridge was hacked and hundreds of millions of dollars are gone, right? One more positive and bullish things, right? Is because OKX Venture is actually backing this project. Think about the other project I was telling you about like last week and what type of companies, what type of people were back in that project. And here we have OKX Venture. I, I do believe that OKX is basically one of the oldest exchange in this space and they have a lot of integrity in the things that they're doing. They're not partnering up with like scammy projects, with bad projects, bad teams and things like that. And they obviously have their due diligence process as well. BTC Layer 2 has recently made significant progress with the search and user data and total value lock, TVL, data, Merlin Chain process approximately 250,000 participants, around 43,000 blocks, blah, blah, blah. B2 Network TVL and Bounce B2 TVL. So they're not providing only Merlin Chain information, but B2 Network as well, which is quite interesting layer two. And Bounce Bit, I don't know much about it at this stage, but as far as I know, they do not have the tokens at this stage. So it might be interesting to basically follow them, to check them, to figure out once they would have these launches uh, in order to participate in them as well. Because anyway, I think the narrative will run right, like crazy you will be able to make money on this 100%. Technology advances, Polygon CDK. Uh, that's the things that I mentioned. I approve this. It actually how this thing works. If you want to develop a layer two, especially with ZK rollup implementation, ZK technology implementation, you would use Polygon CDK. So they are mostly talking here about B2 because they're probably behind B2 as well. But at the end of the page, they have Merlin Chain is set to launch dozens of ecosystem projects with bitmap tag issuing various asset types through the BRC420 protocol, including game characters, music, videos, etc. All of which can empower real application scenarios. Very, very interesting because it's basically a real account of OKX Venture, which is basically a hedge fund behind OKX. They invest in their own money in different crypto projects. So quite bullish from my point of view in connection with the fact that we are speaking about Bitcoin Layer 2, right? And I do believe from my end that it's not a scammy projects, but I will I will essentially provide you with my full response at the end so you can get information from my end, right? So we're kind of coming to this part where I would probably want to tell you about how to participate in the IDO and things like that. And as mentioned, it actually translated from Chinese. So I was able to translate it from Chinese. You can also do it on Twitter. That's interesting because there is definitely a threshold to be able to enter these things. And from my point of view, it's great because it's harder to get in for large amounts of people. Therefore, it's hard. It's it's a higher chance to win the IDO. Like it's not it's not something that being discussed in retail currently. Like just like just remember Satoshi VM. Like all the influencers that never talk about ordinals, they were pushing this project into your throats. So you would buy. So you would tell. So like Bitcoin Layer Two, ZK Rolla Bridge, and things like that. Here, I do believe it's the only video. It's the first one video that you basically just check and see these things. It's very very bullish from my point of view because they're not buying out influencers or things like that because they don't have the goal of pumping and dumping. They don't want to spend resources at this stage in order for influencers to basically chill this thing and, and make you buy. They don't need that. They want to develop long term and things like that. So uh, in terms of the my review, we basically had a review from Benobi who provided 33 percent like ranking for this layer two in comparison to the others, right? We do also have larger people in the industry talking about Bitcoin layer two. So I do tell you, this is the narrative. This is what's going to happen. This is what will make you money. It's going to run like crazy, even despite the fact like technologies and things like that, just because of the narrative. I do know OG originals in this space who are following this project, who are participating into this project and who are actually setting up accounts like right as we speak in order to be able to participate in the idea as well. We do also have developers, OG engineers that are well known in this space with the history of their assets that they've developed being appreciated in the niche. Again, blue box from like 400 bucks, somewhere around that, to 30 thousand dollars. Imagine how much money the initial like first holders, and probably it actually was a free mint in the first place. So probably they minted these blue boxes for free as well. The dev is active on interviews and podcasts in the Western space as well. Well known, a set of things that he developed in Ordinals. So not just, you know, like anonymous team came out of nowhere and things like that. I will be participating in this thing. In fact, I am participating with one account already, which is is just about like 900 bucks that I locked there, but I would be 
planning to participate, I would be planning to at least invest from five to eight thousand dollars. If I would get scammed, if I would not be able to basically get this money out of this IDO, I'm fine with that. I just think that the opportunity is too great, including the amount of people that I'm following and that are participating in this thing as well. That's basically the review from my end. At this stage, I don't think it's a scam. I think it's just very, very early stage. I do like the builders. I do like support. I do see OG developers in this space and OG people in the original space talk about this thing. I do then participate in the IDO. It's been discussed in Bitcoin Frogs as well. So I do like, actually the founder of Bitcoin Frogs was making the post in Discord on this thing. Like, can you imagine that? Can you imagine what is happening? And you don't know about these things because they don't want you to know. They don't want you to know. They don't want you to win the allocation. And they wanted you to know about the previous project, right? Everyone on the market is looking to make money. And this thing, I believe, is something you will be able to make your money with. Now, several things about the IDO process, right? So you have these people's launchpad. Uh, basically, the first time I saw this launchpad, and uh, there are three ways uh, to basically increase your power in order to be able to get your IDO and be eligible for the IDO process as well. You can invite more members, which provides you plus 200 power for each member, which is very, very low because if you would just lock 800 bucks, I'm sorry, 900 bucks, you would get 80 Southern power. Right. And it also allows you to buy their token ally of the launch pads taken. So I would not be buying the token just because of the fact that it will probably just go to zero right after IDO. So you would lose your money that you invest into the, into the token. At this stage, uh, the best scenario, as I see, is basically to just breach your funds. So you're basically just sending your BTC from Unisat wallet into uh, the chain. And they've been locked up for at least 14 days because the guys on the bridge, on the transfer, they don't have peg out functionality. So you can't actually extract your BTC at this stage. I expect it's going to happen. I'm fine. If it's not going to happen, I think it's still a great opportunity. I'm ready to lose the funds that I would be investing into this thing in order to make it work for myself because I think it's just very, very crazy. So guys, I decided to add a quick video on how to actually participate in the launchpad because I figure out it's quite quite hard in the first place and no one basically knows how to use Uniset wallet, but you can participate with your MetaMask wallet as well. So here's a link to the website, marketplace.li.build. Make sure that you're on the right link not to get scammed in the process. So you click Launchpad, you see Merlin Chain. Click on the Merlin Chain and here you see like a bunch of different conditions, blah, blah, blah. Just follow what I have to do, right? Join now. I press join now. I sign with my wallet. Now, in terms of the wallet, uh, so I already have some Ethereum for commissions here, and I do have 900 uh, USDT here as well. It's because I wanted to get a largest amount of points for this wallet, 80,000 um, power points, right? But you can put basically a small amount of USDT if you want to. Basically, what I would be doing with this USDT is that I will be locking it. So I will be locking it for at least a period of two weeks. I don't know if I'm going to get them back. Hopefully I will. And a lot of people who are doing that, they also assume that they will get their USDT back, but anything can happen basically. So then what you have to do is connect your Twitter account. So it's not the first account I'm doing. That's why I created a bunch of Twitter accounts and a bunch of Discord accounts as well. I'm verifying that yeah, I'm a human. And you also do have to follow the page of Particle Network. So let's wait once it will load. So you also have to connect uh, your Discord profile, your current one. And if you used your current one, you need to create a new one, but you can just create a new one from scratch. And no issues on that. Then you basically click join now, accept invite to the Discord channel, verify that you're a human. I'm a human, yes. Cancel. Yeah, so after that, what you would see is that uh, you would want to get an invite code. And the invite code is something that I would have in the first comment under this video. Feel free to use the invite code that I basically shared. It would just mean that I invited you into the launchpad. I will get like 200 PowerPoints, but that's very, very low amount. So then I'm entering invite code, accept invite, right? Here you have different options. You can invite more members, which is very, very low because the max like PowerPoints for each thing is 80,000 and you have to invite like how much? 40 members, I think, 400. So it's just way too much work. Then you have to stake a light token, but it will probably go to zero right after this launch will end. So I would not buy into that. And here I can basically just breach uh, the assets into the Merlin chain, which is my BTC, which is exactly what I'm going to do. 
So I'm visiting Mason. I'm connecting my wallet. Let's check if the right wallet is connected. I need a wallet number three. Right, so it's connected. And uh, here you can basically breach any type of assets. So uh, wrapped BTC, Tether, USDC, or Ethereum. I'm doing Tether in, in my case. We have the issue here because I need to have 0 0.02 to get the maximum location, and I only and I only have 0 0.019. That's why I will send more USDT to this wallet uh, just now, right away. So guys, I fixed my issue with uh, not that much uh, USDT. Let's refresh the page to make sure it will catch new amount. 0 0.02. That's what I need. Swap. Approve. Uh, let's let's hear Max approve. So it's an arbitrum. I'm specifically using arbitrum to have cheaper ways, cheaper fees in terms of the connection and for it to be fast as well. But you can pretty much actually be using anything because there are a bunch of different chains that you can use. I think there was a swap already. It rejected swap. Confirm. Sign the transaction. Right. 002 is exactly the amount that you need if you would want to get the largest allocation possible for one wallet. So you would want 002 BTC. So I'm basically like freezing these funds right now in this Merlin chain. And I do not even know if I will be getting them back. But there are a bunch of people doing that. So I assume that we are getting uh, them back. So here is a request to swap transaction sent. We're waiting for matching, right? Uh, we can see the loading. And uh, kind of one thing that is quite interesting that uh, waiting for the previous step, right? Order matched. That's something that makes me bearish because it seems like there should be someone on their end wanting to swap BTC back to USDT uh, from Maryland chain. So it's very, very interesting. But just basically people who are following this thing, I trust them. That's why I'm doing that. And as mentioned, I'm ready to lose all these funds as well. I just think it's a very, very interesting piece of product. I was not able to participate in previous developments of these engineers that appreciated greatly on the market. That's why I would want to participate in this thing as well. So here, you're just basically waiting. You can just leave the page. I'm not sure if you can close. Probably you can. I would just want to leave because right after I would see that it's completed, I will uh, open this page and essentially move forward into, into the process of, of finalizing the power. I will probably pause at this stage and just wait till uh, the whole thing is processed. So here we see that the swap was successful, right? We can just close this thing and here visit, share, make sure for more information. So in the same wallet, right? It's in the same wallet. So I press this uh, do it yellow button again. And uh, here it says that you need to verify that you basically have this. An interesting thing that you can only verify once. So if you would want to have maybe like 001 here and you would want to send another 001, don't do that. Just send 002 right away or you can basically use two different wallets. So I click verify, another kind of announcement notification, continue verify. And we see it is out in power, um, so I will be getting certain allocation. Now, on top of that, what you would have to do is to lock allocation in two days and 90 minutes my time when I'm recording this. So on Saturday, you would basically would need to go here and lock allocation as well. And it's very, very interesting that current power percentage is 0.003. So it's very, very low. So I'm actually doing it with several, like a bunch of wallets in order to get a decent allocation, but I'm kind of testing more. So I'm not even sure how much I will be able to get. And you would need to come back on Saturday in order to basically click a button to validate that you do want to participate in the IDO. It's very, very important because I do believe that a bunch of people, they will bridge the funds, but they will forget to click the button on Saturday. It's not the best user experience, but probably they have the reasons behind doing something like that. I do think it's a great opportunity. I do think it's the time to use it. There is a craze going on behind the curtains, right? In terms of Bitcoin Layer 2, that's the only thing that's been discussed on Satoshi Roundtable event that I heard of, right? Because I was not obviously on the on the event at this stage. I'm too small for that. I do think it's a very, very interesting and great opportunity, but not financial advice. Do your own research. I'm only putting the money here that I'm ready to lose. And I think that my risk reward here is quite awesome, quite nice, quite great. That's probably everything I have to say on the topic. Like and subscribe if you like uh, the content. I know it was a bit technical, it was a bit complex, but you have to have the edge, have to understand things in order to be early, in order to capitalize the most. If you don't want to do that, you can always close your mistakes 
with money, which is often done in different businesses. So if you don't want to figure out things early, you can basically just buy the same allocation that you would maybe get on the IDO, but way, way more expensive once this whole thing will be launched. Once it will be launched, I will probably be following the project and the things that would be happening with the token. And if you would be seeing some dips, I would be looking to scoop the dips as well, obviously depending on developments of the platform. Because right now at this stage from 5 to 8K from my point of view is nice to enter this thing by but once you would basically be seeing the whole launch, we would need to understand the developments that will be going. Into, but I'm, I'm quite positive on the developments by the development team because they're legit, because they have previous experience of developing things in Ordinal's ecosystem, because they've developed BRC for 20 standard and the blue box and the assets that they've developed, they appreciate it in value greatly. Thank you for watching, guys, again. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.